I see an S, and then it looks like four oxygens, H2SO4. Now, this is sort of incorrect. This is the problem mm. here, because in the AP chemistry land, they like to you to write the net ionic equation. Yes. In net ionic reactions, you must dissociate all things that are soluble, the nickel nosos, yes. and that includes anything that is a... Strong electrolyte or strong acid. And sulfuric acid, if you don't recall, there's like uh, five strong acids. Sulfuric mm -hmm. acid is one. You would not write H2SO4. You would lose credit for yes. that. You would write uh, 2H positive plus SO4 to negative. They might yep. even accept if you wrote H positive, and we'll talk more about this in uh, when we do acids and bases, HSO4 negative. Yep, and I know for sure that is an acceptable answer. Both of those are. So um, sometimes these are basically, and I'm not sure we've said this, but on the AP chemistry exam, there is um, three reactions where they say this plus this makes what? This plus this makes what? They have three of them you must do. They must also be balanced. But you know how to balance equations, and there'll be sometimes you don't, but we plan to teach you. And then that was a non-metal oxide. Yep. We want to do a metal oxide. And metal oxides, so an example of a metal might be what? Uh, uh, potassium. Potassium. So that'd be K2O, not KO. K has a charge of 1 and O minus 2. Yep. And then I'm going to write this this way. HOH, same as H2O. And the metal oxides plus water always make a... Base. Base. So, non-metal oxides with water make acids. Metal oxides with water make bases. So what is the opposites. base of potassium hydroxide? What is the base of <laughs> potassium? Potassium hydroxide. KOH. Now, is that correct? No, because that is a strong electrolyte. So, you're going to write K positive plus OH negative. So, yep. the actual correct answer is this. Now, that means... Probably to do a little balancing, too. This is unbalanced. Is That's correct. So, if I've got two potassiums here, I'm going to need to put a two potassiums here. Uh -huh. um, and that gives me... Uh, I think I just need to put a two in front of the I OH I think you're minus. right. Yep. So, kind of play around. Again, there is no uh, rocket science to this. It's just kind of guess and check. And then kind of a weird one is that you can have... I'm not sure this is on here, but if you have a metal oxide, I'm not sure where I have this. Hmm. Do you find that, Mr. Sun? Yeah. Plus a non-metal oxide. That is Roman numeral five, guys. So I'm jumping around. Roman numeral so five on your handout. So this should the oxides, put them all together. So a metal oxide, let's say potassium oxide, K2O, and I write a non-metal oxide, let's say a carbon dioxide. If you look at that rule, it says it always makes a salt containing yep. oxygen. But folks, it's just put them together. Yeah. You've got potassium, carbon, and oxygen. This is just kind of like that uh, acid one. Just You're going to make K2CO3. There it is. And it's a nickel no so This is a NAD. But there's no water, Mr. Bergman. This is true. Actually, good point. This one would, if you were to take this, there's this. you can't split them apart because there's no water present. So you would write solid potassium carbonate. Yep. Yeah, so they only split apart if they're in water. So that was a right. very good point, Mr. Sam. Hey, I do what I can. You're amazing. Yeah. <laughs> Two right. amazing. All right. Metal oxides plus water form bases. We talked about that. That was Roman number three, Roman number four, decomposition reactions. If you have a base, it decomposes into a metal oxide and water. You have to kind of play around with these. I don't think I'm going to do examples here. Uh, we have examples printed in the paper. And you will get them ad nauseum in class. And then, uh, yes, more here. We have so many problems for you to do, you're going to just be mad at us, I think. Probably. Yeah, you're going to say, you guys are mean. But you'll get over it. So Okay. Wait. Now, we do need to talk about Roman numeral six. Yes. Roman numeral six is something new. And there's a ton of verbiage here. So uh, obviously on the PowerPoint, especially if you're watching this on a uh, small screen, you're going to go, oh my Yeah, God. don't read it. It's on your handout. It's in your handout. So I want to talk about that we have something called a coordination compound, sometimes called complex ions. Complex ions. And people think complex ions are complex. And not they really. are not very complex. No. Nope. A coordination compound has two parts. It has a transition metal, and only some selected ones. So let's actually yep. chat about which ones they are. It basically starts at iron. And now look on your periodic table. Get your periodic table out, please, everybody. Pause rustle, the video rustle. and get the periodic rustling table out. Rustling papers, papers rustling. Very good. You have your periodic table out. We actually have it on the wall, so we're good. If you start at iron and then you go over to essentially um, aluminum, this is aluminum right here. Basically, all the metals, so iron, cobalt, nickel, underneath aluminum, you've got gallium. Basically, this little block of, of metals, um, you know, gold, silver, zinc, etc. This is a, a GA, not a CA. Okay, these are the metals that do this. And then the second thing is you have something called a ligand. Mm. 
and there are only a few select ligands, which are printed on your paper, but yep. I think I'll reprint them. Ammonia is one. Water is another one. Thiocyanate is one. Uh, hydroxide, hydroxide is one. Yep. I'm missing and one. cyanide. Oh, and cyanide. So basically here is the gist. If you mix one of these guys as an ion, by the way, that means you'll have a charge. You have to figure out its charge. And one of these, then you make a complex ion. Yep. By the way, ligand only has one G. Ligand only has one Mr. G. Mr. Bergman and I are both not, I am not wonderful at spelling. Challenged. <laughs> okay, so and my handwriting is really bad. That's why Bergman's doing all the I'm writing on these. I'm <laughs> writing because I have at least slightly better handwriting. So now as we talk about this, here's the basically the general rule. is You take the charge of the metal, and then that determines, and then you times that number by two, and then once you do that, that will tell you the number of ligands. Yep. One G. One G. <laughs> to attach. I say I can write better, and it doesn't look good today. <laughs> okay. Um, and then you must then refigure the charge. Yes. So, we'll do a, a couple of examples here. So, if I have Fe three positive, and I react it with thiocyanate. What I need to do is this three charge, the charge of iron is three, double the charge is six. six. So this will be Fe parentheses SCN six. Now what we need to do is we can put brackets around it. You don't necessarily have to do brackets. I think it makes it easier. Yep. And we refigure the charge. Iron has a charge of plus three, because there is one iron mm -hmm. right here. The thiocyanate, since we have now said that there are th six thiocyanates, of course, they will have a charge as a group of... Negative six. Negative six. So we take positive three plus negative six. That adds up to... Negative three. Negative three. So this is the complex ion, um, which has a name. I don't recall what it is. Yeah. Not terribly important. Another really common one is... Um, Ferrocyanate, something like that. I can't remember. I'll that'd be hexacyanate uh, iron yeah, 3. Yeah, something wrong. Um, let's take a common one. Let's take, for example, if I have... Actually, let me do it a little differently. If I say zinc, I'm going to write it... Actually, let me blank screen here. More space here. So let's say I have uh, zinc nitrate is added to concentrated... I'll abbreviate the word concentrated ammonia. Now, if you see something like this when you're when you're doing these product predictions, the, uh, you're going to get to a point where words are going to send off bells and whistles in your head. You're going to see ammonia, and you're going to go, ah, that's one of the ligands. This is going to be a complex ion. I'm going to double check that by looking to see if a transition metal is also in the problem. And look, there's zinc. Now, warning, ammonia is a little tricky because ammonia is also typically found in acid-base problems. True. So, but there's just, that's the only two places that you'll see them. Yeah, and zinc nitrate not being an acid or a base, we can conclude it's yes, a indeed. complex ion problem. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this zinc nitrate, and uh, we, I, we would say this is in a solution. I probably didn't say that. Aqueous solution. And so what I'm going to say is I'm going to break the zinc uh, into ions. I'm going to dissociate it because it's a nacle no so. It's yep. a no so, right? All it's nitrates are soluble. And then I'm going to say plus ammonia. And the form of ammonia is NH3. Now, don't confuse ammonia with ammonium. Nope. That's NH4 mm. positive. It is not the same thing. Nope. No ligands with ammonium. Now, um, I actually usually typically look to see if I can find a precipitation reaction, but mm -hmm. since we're talking about coordination compounds, that would sort of be silly. Yeah. And so the nitrate is not actually important, and it would fall out. So I'm going to make a coordination compound with the ammonia. The zinc has a charge of two positive, so you double that, and you get... We need four ammonias. So we're going to say it's Zn, parentheses, NH3, 4. Now we refigure the charge. The charge of the zinc is plus 2. Mm -hmm. There are four ammonias. Now what's the charge of ammonia? I don't see a charge. So that means it has a charge of? Zero. So 4 times 0 is zero. 0. So the charge of this whole thing would be? Plus 2. Yep, plus 2. So that's how you do these. This, by the way, actually, let me tell you the name of this. and he write this down. This would be called tetra amine. Two M's in amine? Uh, yes, I think. Zinc 2. I'm not sure you necessarily would have to put the Roman numeral 2, but that would be the name of this ion. Tetra, meaning there are four. Tetra is the, fo the fourth. You ever played the game Tetris? They all have four squares. They all have four squares. Hence the name. Do, 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 that game? Do, do, so yeah, so Tetra do, do, means zinc 2. 
See, I can be just as annoying with my you're music, pretty good. too. You're pretty good. You're pretty good. Do, 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 do. All right, let's stop. I give him the flute. Oh, my God. No, I don't know about that. Oh, do you want to talk about aluminum at all? You the know. weird one, or do you want to just hit that one in class? No, I think, well, real fast. Aluminum's, no, I no. don't think so. Okay, it's we'll talk about exception. it later. They always would get it right. You know? Yeah, that's so true. I don't think that's Okay, never mind. All right, um, if it's not, now we're just going to do some problems. So yeah. um, we got a bunch of problems for you to do. Hydrogen sulfide. Yep. Is bubbled through a solution of silver nitrate. Let's see if we can figure out what the products are. Yeah. Now, when you approach these guys, step number one is figure out what kind of reaction do you have, and therefore, then, what rules will you follow? So, now, hydrogen sulfide, you always have to look at the question mm -hmm. um, and decide if you want to split it apart. Do you split hydrogen sulfide apart, yes or no, and why would you or wouldn't you, Mr. Sanders? Uh, I'm going to say you would, because it's an acid. It's but it's a, a gas. Acid. But it's a gas. You're right. No. Bubble through a solution. So this is a gas. So hmm. So we're gonna leave hydrogen sulfide together. Yeah, I'm gonna leave it together. So it's gonna You're be right. H two. Not a strong acid. Now remember, I know that because S has a charge of two minus, and yep. H is positive one. So it's H two S. Yep. And it's bubbled through a solution of silver nitrate. Silver nitrate. Now would I separate that one? Uh, definitely, it's a no. It's a no. So Ag positive. It's a an acyl no so, and it's a no. Yep. So I dissociate it. So now we have a reaction. Mm -hmm. And now I want to predict the products. Now you could do the the Sammy inversion here, if you will, right? Is that, is that a word? The Sammy inversion. What's in the sure. beaker? H2S, Ag positive, and NO3 negative. Now who's gonna like each other? Who's saying, oh, she's mm. so hot? Well, nobody likes nitrate. Nobody likes nitrate. No. Sorry, nitrate. There, we'll learn where nitrate actually does something yep. later on. But uh, it's typically boring. Silver might be interested in sulfide because sulfides hey. are not typically soluble. You see, silver can meet sulfide. Now, he's still connected to the hydrogen, but he really likes her, so he's going to steal her away. Yep. And it's going to make Ag2S solid because, of course, that's the precipitate. And then it kicks out also. Uh, it's going to kick out some hydrogen ions. Now, an important thing, it's not H, it's H positive. Plus, right. Boy, if you mess one little thing like that up, they get really testy in mm -hmm. the AP test. And to balance this, you'll need a two here to get the two silvers. Yep. And, and I think you'll need two, two hydrogens. Yep. And that's it. Yeah. So that's the answer to question one. Yeah. We want to jump on down to question number two. Number two. Now, on question number two, concentrated ammonia. Oh, there's that ammonia stuff. Yep. Is that a dissolution of copper two nitrate? And copper two is a transition metal. He's one of those guys in that sort of block of elements. So, so I'm I seeing see. transition metal and a ligand. So ammonia, so I'm right in H3. Mm -hmm. And it's a nitrate, right? Uh, copper two nitrate, yes. So I'm going to separate them out. Cu2 positive plus NO3 negative. Yep, because no's are soluble. Now, what do you think the nitrate's going to do? Nothing. You see, he is very boring. He does not like it. Nine times, 99 times out of 100, nitrate's going to be a spectator ion. So we've got the copper and the ammonia, so what are we going to do? we got we got charge of positive 2 here. This yep. is going to make one of them coordination compounds yep. for complex ions. He's going to make Cu. And four ammonias. Ammonia connected to four. The ammonia ammonias. has no charge, so, so it stays at 2+. plus. 2+. Plus. There you have it. So that's a pretty easy one. Yep. Those are really easy. If you end up with one of those on oh, the yeah. AP test, they are very You're easy. You're golden. All right, now, equal volumes of dilute equimolar. Now, mm, there's equimolar. some key words there. This is an acid-base problem. It is. Sodium carbonate and hydrochloric acid are mixed. Okay. So equimolar, sodium carbonate. Now, how are we going to do this? Sodium, nah, is this, nah, sodium carbonate. So it is. Na positive plus carbonate. Don't get this confused with hydrogen carbonate. Is reacted with? Hydrochloric acid. And do we separate hydrochloric We acid? do. That's a strong acid. Well, I know that one for sure. I'm not going to mess that one up. Strong acids. Now, we, let's write at the top here, equimolar. What does that mean? Uh, that means we have the same number of moles of everything. So that's easy. Same number of moles. Yes. Now, by the way, let me say one more thing here. Sodium uh, carbon is Na2CO3. Mm -hmm. So if you really want to, you could put a 2 here. Yep. Um, but um, you're going to see he's going to fall out anyways. Yep. So who's going to like each other? Well, let's see. The na and the coal are not going to like each other because they're always Neckel. soluble. Neckel. Neckel. So neckel. Yeah. So we those are going to be your spectators for sure. So, so we've got hydrogen and carbonate together. How yep. are we going to put those together? Now, it's very important we understand this equal molar business. Yes. Because, well, the hydrogen and the carbonate can come together to form the hydrogen carbonate ion. Yes. But why didn't you write, now, HCO3, what's the charge of that? Minus one. How do you know that? Because uh, I memorized it on my big list. How else would you know that? Uh, well, if I have a carbonate of a minus 2 and I stick a hydrogen with a plus 1 on it, you just add up the charges. That's right. Um, why didn't you just do this? Well, oh, if I can write it up, H2CO3. Yeah. H2CO3. Well, the key here is the word equal molar, meaning we have the same number of moles of hydrogen as we do carbonate. So in that case, it's a 1 to 1 ratio. So we have one carbonate and one hydrogen. Now.